great to have everyone here. Give me just a moment. I want to take some introductions and then we will have. Where are we? Let's see here. There we go. There we go. All right. Uh, take some introductions here and then we're going to uh, bring on our lead mentor of uh, Billion Dollar Mind, our lead mentor for tonight. I will let you know he may share this also. Um, there's a, a, a typhoon going on. Uh, over there in uh, the Philippines where he resides. And so prayerfully, everything will go on without a hitch um, and his internet will hold up and, and all that good stuff. So uh, let's definitely uh, keep um, uh, keep our lead mentor, John Austin, his family, uh, and all the islands over there uh, in the Philippines in our thoughts and prayers. So let's see what, who we have here. I'll uh, do some intros. Hey, Joseph and Kent. Alvin, uh, Cowboy Jim, Michael Johnson, good to have you, buddy. Uh, Thuvan, I hope I said that right. Forgive me if I messed that up. Lindsay, Lindsay, my brother from another mother from down hey, brother. under. So, hey, it's, it's, my, it's my dad. Hey, Papa. No, hey, I Pops, am. how you doing, sir? <laughs> good. Good to have you, Pops. Thumbs up, dad. He's, he just brought me a coffee. All right, iPhone and Agnes and David Farrell and Zoom user and Lucky and Ron and me. I hope I'm saying that right, me, Ling. I hope I said that right. Forgive me if I did it. Barbara T and LK from the great state of Washington. Hey, Carla, Rosemary, Pete, um, uh, Rosita and Cowboy Jim and... DJ, and let's see if I miss anybody. I, I know I see John. Oh, okay. Quite a few folks have come on. I didn't see. Hey, Dr. K and Agnes. Let's see. Ron, some of you I've already called. Julene, Thomas, Roger, another Zoom user. Andrew Callahan. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, Chet, Rudy. All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to tonight's um uh, Zoom, uh, Billion Dollar Mind. I uh, want to introduce, most of you uh, know him by now. Um, and if you're a guest, certainly want to introduce you to um, to John Austin. Um, this, what we're doing here at Billion Dollar Mind, the fact that we're going to uh, help transform the world together, uh, starting with yours, starting with mine, um, one life uh, at a time. Uh, this amazing vision uh, was given to uh, John over 40 years ago, uh, 40 years ago. And, and um, he didn't want to walk into it. <laughs> but like uh, like Moses leading the children of Israel, you know, out of the wilderness, I'm sorry, out of Egypt, through the wilderness, and ultimately they made it through the promised land. Uh, he is our Moses. And so I want to turn it over uh, to John. John, I believe you should be able to take the controls. Okay. Did Thank you, did you, you Professor. Controls? Can you uh, hear me? I can hear you just fine. Did you need the controls, John? Did you need to... Uh, mm, are you no. showing your screen? Uh, well, why don't you just show a, a screen? I don't... Okay. And then I'll tell you what, John, if you're okay with this, I can bring up a whiteboard and as you are sharing... I know sometimes you might share some scriptures or what have you, and I can kind of post those if you're okay with that. Does that work for you? Yeah, that works. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so let's bring our notepad up. So welcome, everybody, to our Billion Dollar Mind Seminar. Uh, great to be here again. About three weeks ago, I was put upon my heart to start a new company, and so I've been working extremely hard. Had a very long day yesterday working with programmers, et cetera, but uh, it's coming along very nicely. Um, we're getting pretty close to finishing up the compensation plan. They've started integrating the DeFi wallet uh, into the website. So I don't think it's going to be too much longer. We're going to be able to uh, get this rocket off the ground. Oh. One day, a young, a young man approached the Greek philosopher Socrates and said, I come to you for knowledge. Well, Socrates took the young man down to the sea and dunked him under the water. 
And when he let the young man up for air, he asked, uh, asked him to repeat what he wanted. Knowledge, oh great one, he sputtered. Well, Socrates put him under the water again, and after repeated dunkings, the philosopher asked, what do you want? The young man finally guessed and said, air, I want air. <laughs> Good answered Socrates. Now, when you want knowledge as much as you want air, you shall mm. have it. Mm. So we are uh, talking about faith, and I think this applies the same way. When we want faith as much as this young man wanted air, then we will find it. Uh, I've, you know, shared some of my backstories on, you know, how I had gone to the Lord and asked him to teach me about faith. And that's kind of how I felt. I was, uh, you know, very hungry, very thirsty to know some certain things. But in Psalms 37, 4, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So what is the difference between a desire and a wish? Well, a wish comes from the head and a desire comes from the heart. For example, you might say, I wish I had a million dollars, believing you're never going to get it and not being willing to do what it takes to get it. Desiring a million dollars is another thing. It comes from the heart and you're willing to work toward that goal until you get it. Now, if you had Aladdin's lamp, all you'd have to do is wish for the million dollars and the genie would grant you the wish. The caveat is you only get three wishes. So we know how the story ends. On the other hand, God grants desires and they are only limited by your faith. So the first thing you need to do is delight yourself in the Lord. Now, I have labeled that as gratitude. Be grateful in all things, and the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. The scripture, in fact, commands us to be grateful in all things. It says we have to we have to be thankful, or without gratitude, we can't please the Lord. Without uh, so how many of you know how many of us have been grateful for things that are unfortunate is it possible to be grateful when unfortunate things happen when a loved one dies do you give thanks unto the lord when you get sick do you thank the lord for your sickness well many years ago i contracted a rapidly growing skin cancer on one of my fingers i didn't want to go the medical route and somewhere in my reading uh someone said that disease cannot coexist with the frequency of love. So I began mentally talking to the cancer and sending love to it. Wow. A short time later, I learned about an herbal salve that reportedly could help, and I applied some to the cancer and covered it with a bandage. And a few days later, it had dried up. And when the scab came off, out came these root-like fingers and my finger's been fine ever since. Mm. Well, Harvard University conducted research studies on the power of love. Their findings were that human beings could deliberately produce feelings of love. And according to their findings, there is no reason why we can't learn to generate love the same as we do other natural forces. Here is a simple exercise. And as you do it, rather than thinking about the frequency of love, take a deep breath and simply feel the vibration of love as it enters your heart. If you find your mind trying to get involved with feeling the frequency, just say the word clear. If thoughts and colors come into your mind, that's okay. What is important is feeling the frequencies first. So as you inhale, receive the frequency of love. Then as you exhale, move the love throughout your entire being. This is where you must also trust and believe that the frequency of love exists outside of you and is available to you anytime that you want to tap into it. 
by changing your frequency, you don't need to change your thinking because your thoughts will automatically change and your mind will take care of itself. This is what it means to work from the inside out. If we analyze the frequencies of gratitude and love, I think there's definitely, definitely an overlap between the two. If we truly love the Lord, we will delight ourselves in him and we will begin to offer thanks in all things, knowing that even the painful and challenging things of life are working for our good. What comes after gratitude? Well, the Bible says to write the vision and make it plain. I call this a blueprint. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. If you plan to build a house, you will probably draw a blueprint, which is evidence of a house you cannot yet see. Before the blueprint is drawn, the house is just a wish, mm. but once it is drawn, it becomes a desire. Now that we know what we want, the next step is to surround ourselves with the feeling of already having and living in that house. What would it feel like? Personally, I like to take some time just before going to sleep and immediately after waking up to sit and meditate upon the feeling of already having the thing I desire. Finally, we want to affirm that is that it is so. So let it be done. It is done. It is finished. It is completed. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this beautiful house. So let's talk a little bit about applying faith to some illness. Perhaps you're dealing with a condition that needs to be fixed. I'm reminded of a story. <clears throat> a lady in the U.S., she had an inoperable bladder cancer, I think it was. And so she had heard about this uh, hospital in China that operates on faith. They don't do any they don't do any surgeries with knives or anything like that. Everything is done with faith. So she traveled to China, and they assigned three people to work with her. One was a person who operated a uh, sonogram, and this person took a before picture of the tumor that she posted to the left side of the monitor, and then she put a live feed of the tumor on the right side. The other two were faith healers, and they were practiced in feeling that the person they're working with is already healed. So as they're going through this exercise, they're, they're imagining or feeling that this woman is healed. And then they're also chanting some words. So they're doing the affirmation, and the words in in Chinese were something like, it's done, it's finished, it's completed. And I, I watched this on a video and you could see the tumor literally begin to shrink. Mm. And in a minute and 45 seconds from the time they started, this tumor is completely gone, mm. completely gone. No, there's nothing left, no residue. So what happened to the tumor? We can explain this now from quantum physics because everything in the universe is made up from photons of light. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's photons of light. Photons of light make up everything. And affirm means to make firm from that which is infirm. Okay, so... Everything that we have in our physical world is made up of photons of light, the rocks, the trees, literally everything, our, our bodies um, are made up of photons of light. So what happened in this case, literally, is 
the photons of light, instead of coming together and agreeing to create the tumor, the tumor is already created. With the power of faith, these photons of light agreed to go back into random orbit. And photons of light in, in random orbit don't create anything. There is no, no physical substance. So literally, in a minute and 45 seconds of feeling, and of course, this woman was instructed to feel as well, this tumor just disappears, goes back in, the photons of light go back into random orbit. So we have different uh, things here. They're all related. Uh, so we can, as we learn here, we can actually uh, send love to other people. You know, there's stories, uh, there was a lady that was a caregiver for somebody who was sick and couldn't take care of herself. And so all the time she's around this person, she's sending this person love. And this person was quite, uh, quite debilitated. And she's asking this caregiver if she can ever recover. And she's telling her, yes, that uh, through the power of love, that she will eventually be healed. I think it was only about three weeks of doing this. And uh, the woman is completely healed. Mm. Of course, the, uh, the woman... The caregiver worked herself out of a job. She was no lo longer needed. But the point being is we can exercise faith in behalf of other people. So um, I'm going to take a liberty here. I hope I don't offend. I, I just recently learned that one of our members has cancer. Um Roger, would you mind me talking about you a little? We can exercise some faith in your behalf. If you'd like to come off a mute and interact with me, that would be fine. So what... Uh, as a group... We can send uh, we can send Roger some love. He's he's on on with us here tonight. Um, we can imagine the feeling of him being healed. So the first thing, the first step, obviously, is gratitude. Um, you know, and I don't want to put Roger on the spot, but Roger, have you ever? Uh, have you ever given thanks for the cancer? Have you, you know, just heartfelt, deep gratitude uh, that you've offered up to the Lord? Because all things, all this is all working for your good. It's all working for your good. All things work for good to those who love the Lord. And I know you love the Lord. Okay. So, uh, When you're healed, obviously, this is going to be a great testimony, not only to you, but to your family, to others that you share the, this, uh, this testimony with. And, and really, uh, faith comes by hearing the word. So, you know, many of my uh, experiences in life actually caused my faith to grow. My grandmother died when I was very, very young, so I, I don't remember her, but my father tells the story of her being in an accident and breaking both of her legs. And these were complete breaks. It was the, the bone was completely sheared. Um, and anyway, the doctor came in, he, he set the bones in place and he wanted to put casts on. And, uh, she told the doctor, no, in her opinion, that would be a, an offense unto the Lord. And she literally got up and walked and walked every day for the rest of her life. So she was literally healed instantly through her faith. 
and it is our faith. It's through our faith that we're healed. Okay, but our faith can can grow strong. It's like a seed we plant in the ground, and it can grow and become a huge tree. A mustard seed can grow into a huge tree, wherein the fowls of the air can can lodge. So it's these stories, stories like this, that helped my faith to grow. So the first thing is gratitude. Remember when I was uh, I got this cancer on my finger, a fast growing skin cancer, I began focusing on that and sending love and gratitude into that cancer. Now it was through other means that that was taken care of, but I believe Truly, it was by the power of faith, because sometimes we're led to something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. In other words, we don't get that immediate miraculous healing. We're maybe led to a, a nutritional product or an herb or, or something like that. So I don't preclude any of these things. I simply try to allow things to unfold and come to an understanding what the Lord is trying to tell me, teach me. Mm -hmm. But um, the next step would be to visualize. I told the story about my eight-year-old son who fell off of a cement wall and broke his tailbone. And he, I had him uh, first thank the Lord for this quote unquote, opportunity to exercise faith. Again, without faith, we can't please the Lord. How many of us would truly exercise faith if we didn't have problems? Mm. Very, very few of us. If we didn't have problems to overcome, very few of us would ever exercise faith. So problems are literally an opportunity to exercise faith. And the deeper the problem, the bigger the problem, perhaps the stronger our faith is going to become because what's going to take more exercise perhaps to overcome a big problem than a, uh, you know, some little thing. The next thing is to surround yourself with a feeling of whatever you desire. So in this case, Roger, you would want to surround yourself with a feeling how would it feel if right now you were pain free? And everybody, everybody listening, if you can add your to your feelings, oh, so let it be done. It is done. It is finished. It is complete. It is done. It is finished. It is complete. It is done. It is finished. It is complete. It is done. It is finished. It is complete. It is done. It is finished. It is complete. It is done. It is finished. It is complete. Thank you, Lord, that Roger is healed. Return to complete health, pain-free. Amen. Amen. Wow. Mm. Whatsoever you ask in faith believing, you shall receive. Mm. So the only limitation is upon our faith. And our faith can grow stronger. What did the Lord say about faith? He said, have the faith of a little child. What does a little child believe? 
A little child believes if he asks mommy for something over and over again that eventually he's going to get it, right? Well, that's what the Lord e explained to me, that if I wanted something, continue asking for it until I, until I get it. Never let up. See, we can give up on faith. But faith will never give up on us. We're the ones who give up. Keep asking until you get what you want. With that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to the professor here to share a little wealth building tool that we've created. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just kind of give a little uh, background information here. We're developing a crypto wallet, a DeFi wallet, where we will be money coming in will be crypto, money going out will be crypto. And this uh, to me is important. Uh, number one, it puts us in a puts us in a space and a deregulated space. Okay, and that's where we want to be. Um, the only time you're going to pay taxes on crypto is when you take it out and convert it to fiat and and um, agree to do that, volunteer to do that. Anyway, I'm not going to get into any of that, but I've long wanted crypto to become mainstream. And we're going to help that happen here because we're literally going to help millions of people get involved with cryptocurrency. We're going to, they're going to learn how to get crypto and how to put it in their wallet and how to take it out of the wallet, and how to convert it back to fiat if they want to. Obviously, people need to put food on the table. And so we're going to make that possible and it's going to happen very quickly. And you will see why when a uh, professor begins to explain how this works. But another facet of what we're doing here, we're working with a coin called Flare. The ticker symbol is FLR. There's more than one Flare coin, as there is more than one USDT and more than one Ethereum and more than one Bitcoin. <clears throat> many different versions of different coins. We are working with Flare, F-L-R. Right now, Flare is 0 0.021 cents, two cents. It's expected to one day go as high as $40,000. Hmm. So in comparison, I was offered Bitcoin at a nickel many years ago, thought about $1,000 worth. It'll be worth about $350 million today. So if you were to buy Flare now at two cents and it goes to 40,000, I believe that's about, uh, is that 400,000? Anyway, it's a lot of money. So we're going to help people. We're going to help people here accumulate a lot of this coin. Another objective that we have is to literally take power away from the sharks that come in and buy up big blocks of coin. And then they dump it and drive the price down. And then they buy more big blocks and drive the price up. And then they sell. And they're, they're the ones cause, causing volatility in the market. Well, frankly, we're going to be accumulating this coin for a different reason. We're going to be accumulating this, realizing that the end game is to save it long enough to have that, you know, create that legacy for our children and grandchildren, to have the money that we need to retire in style. That's our objective. So as the sharks come in and sell big blocks of coin, instead of us dumping our coins and, and causing the price to even go lower, we're going to be buying. We're going to be taking coins away from those sharks and making it even harder for them to manipulate the price. And I believe that in time, we might be able to control as much as two thirds to three fourths of the available flare coins on the market. That would be absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Professor, and you can share with people how we're going to 
make it possible for them to accumulate a lot of flare coins. What what a challenging task, John, that you have you have given me because I am still I'm I'm still with Roger. I, I'm still feeling that healing, man. Um wow. Wow, that was amazing. Y'all just give me a moment. Let me just let me collect myself to get back here. But that was amazing. That was amazing. 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 All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, as um, John shared, we're going to be accumulating flair. Now, I want to help everyone um, that's a part of Billion Dollar Mind to accumulate no less than, no less than a million flair over time. No less than. Okay. No less than. Um, what if flare doesn't get to 40,000, but it gets to two dollars and you've got a million flare? That's two million in value. What if flare doesn't get to 40,000, but it gets to uh, $20 and you've got a million flare? That's 20 million. And there will be plenty of sharing from the scriptures, uh, whether it's uh, Matthew 25, 14 through 30, uh, the, uh, the parable of the, of the talents. When you find out what a talent of gold would be worth in back then and what it would be worth today and how that all played out. And we'll uh, be sharing a lot of uh, um, scriptures about, you know, our getting wealth, not just to have big houses and big cars and all that stuff, but to make sure that our families are taken care of and that we've got far more than what we need so that we can bless others. Um, so, how are we going to do this, ladies and gentlemen? Well, you could just go out and buy a bunch of flair. Um, however, you could leverage the model that I'm about to share with you and accumulate far more flair than what the average person can just go out and purchase themselves. So we've got a generational wealth uh, a donation plan. And so we're going to leverage another uh, scriptural principle of re uh, sowing and reaping. And so the principle goes like this. We reap what we sow, number one. Number two, we've got to sow to reap. Number three, when we reap, we reap more than what we sow. All right, so here are some highlights. Some of you come from the home business arena or the make money online niche. So some of the, you... I mean, this will make uh, a lot of sense initially. Uh, others of you, uh, maybe you don't come from that space just yet, uh, but you'll be glad to know there are no monthly subscriptions. So nobody's going to have a bill here, okay? You're not going to have a month to month to month to month bill. Number two, um, we've got donation packages, and each donation package is going to have a very hefty payout. But the donation packages start small. So we've got low medium, and what's referred to in our industry as high ticket uh, uh, packages. Now, why is that important? Because that can generate low, medium, and also high ticket payouts. Why? Because the payout is gargantuan. It's an 80% payout uh, to one person. Now, if we compare that to uh, other platforms within this make money online, make money from home niche, Usually, a company is going to pay somewhere between 35 to 50 percent of what the revenue is coming into the company. Uh, 35 to 50 percent goes out in the affiliate structure. Okay, then that 30 to 50 percent, 35 to 50 percent is split amongst other people, six, seven, eight, nine, ten folks. Here, 80 percent of the donation is going to be paid out to one person. The reason that's important is that you don't have to have an army of folks donating for you to generate uh, gargantuan uh, uh, donation amounts uh, in your coffers, okay? Additionally, I'll share with you what we call unlimited width and unlimited depth payouts. Um, single payouts. All right, so there's an 80% payout. Um, so every donation, 80% is going to be paid out to one person. And so that on the low end is $8. Uh, dollars. Now, when I say dollars or if I say eight bucks, 
it's $8 worth of flair, all right? And we'll make sure that you know how to convert flair into usable, spendable cash. The ultimate goal um, and vision is for you to generate so much flair that you can convert what you need to convert in usable, spendable cash for right now, uh, you know, bill paying, but that you have enough flair remaining to accumulate that to at least a million flair as a minimum is what we want to see uh, our folks have. Again, because if flair gets to a dollar and you've got a million, there's seven figures in value there. There's a million, you're, you're a millionaire. Okay. If Flair gets to, you know, we went through those numbers before. If it gets to two dollars, two million, gets to twenty dollars, twenty million, so on and so forth. You can also receive a single donation as high as sixteen thousand dollars. That's how powerful it is having one person getting 80% of the payout. The beautiful part is that payouts will be available upon um uh demand, uh remaining meaning. When a donation comes into the system, let's say someone's donating to you, that's going to show up in your back office. You go in your back office, you see the do uh, donated amount, it's there. You want to click that button. You want that to go over to your uh, DeFi wallet. For those of you who aren't aware of what that is, we'll help you set all that good stuff up. But that's basically your own bank. You become your own uh, crypto bank. It goes right over to the crypto bank uh, of yours. And then again, we'll make sure that you know how to convert it into usable, spendable cash. All right. What are the donation options? Okay. The donation options are on the left. The donation payouts relative to those uh, uh, donations are on the right. So someone can start off with a $10 donation. $8 of that is going to be paid out to one person. We'll cover the one person in just a few moments. Somebody can do a $50 donation. Now, you don't want to skip any, all right? So you don't want to do the 10 and then go down to the 1,000. No, you'd want to do the 10, the 50, the 100, the 250. Now, you can do those. You can go in and hit the button to do the $10 package, then come in and hit the button to do the 50, and then come in and do the button to do the 100. Now, you want to get started at a place that makes sense for you financially, all right? So you'll hear us say this a lot. If you can't afford to lose it, you can't afford to donate it. With that being said, you want to donate as much as your resources allow. The reason being is once you uh, uh, have a donation or make a donation, in keeping with the universal principle, you now can reap. So once you sow the $10, you can reap the payout from someone sowing to you. $10. Once you sow the $50, we reap what we sow. We've got to sow to reap, but we reap more than what we sow. Then you would get the $40 payout when someone sows $50 to you. Okay. All right. Now, um, folks are going to ask, we've already had people ask, well, what's the, what's the sweet spot? I believe what you're looking at right now is the sweet spot. Will everybody be able to do this? Maybe not. Okay. Start where it makes sense for you. Uh, but if you do the math on this, if you came aboard and you did the $10 and the 50 and the 100 and the 250 and the 500 and the 1,000, all right, that's a budget of just under 2,000, okay? 1,910 is what that comes out to be. Now, why might you want to consider that if you have the resources? Because if um, you have someone connected to you and they did the same thing, then you're immediately qualified for all of this. That would be 1528. So with just one person doing what you did in this example, and again, if you can't, if that doesn't make sense to you financially, don't do that. Do what makes sense to you financially. If you, if it makes sense for you to do more, then do more, whatever works. Now remember, somebody else is benefiting from your donation. You're sowing to somebody, okay? Then we're going to look to read where, as others begin to sow uh, uh, to you. So it only takes, in this example, two people that did the same thing that you did, all right, uh, that's donating to you, and you're well into profits, well into profits. Okay, now let's start to uh, share the other donation amounts. 
Okay, so now this is where we start to get into the mid and the high ticket. Uh, I would say anything less than up to about 500, I would say is smaller ticket. And from 1,000 on, I would say is probably mid ticket. We get to 5,000. Now we're starting to get into to big ticket. What do we mean by that? Okay. Well, you make this $5,000 donation. All right. Person you are connected to gets 4,000 of that. The other 20% stays with the company that allows the company to, to build out the infrastructure, have the programmers, ultimately the customer service, all the stuff that companies need to have. But the overwhelming majority of the donation is going directly to uh, um, one of the members. All right. In this case, maybe the member that referred you uh, to what we're doing. Uh, and so you can see that in time, we want everyone in time to qualify for each donation step. Now, let's assume that happens. Let's assume in time you have someone that's connected to you that also qualifies for each donation step. I'll start from the bottom going all the way up. That means that when they uh, do the 20,000 donation, all right, you may, you get 16,000 of it paid to your back office that you can click a button and have going over to your own crypto bank, okay? But before they did the 20, they did 15. So that means you picked up 12 there. But before they did the 15, they did 10. You picked up eight there. Now, now, most people aren't going to come off the street and do these larger ones. These larger ones are typically going to come from surplus donations. See, we want our barns to be filled, but we want them bulging. We want there to be surplus. Okay. All right. And so before you got to, to the 10,000 or someone got to the 10,000 donating to you, they did the 7,500. So look, you picked up all of this before you even got down here. Okay. When you do all of the math, this is just under, just under 50,000. I think it's 48,000 and some change. So just under 50,000 in potential, maybe perhaps all of my disclaimers, donations to you from one person from one person that could be almost 50,000 uh in uh potential okay now i'm saying 50,000 or just under 50,000 that's based on a us dollar because we're going to be paid in flare i remember years ago i was a part of a project that paid us in bitcoin when i first started bitcoin was going for 515 dollars a bitcoin Ultimately, um, uh, a few years into it, Bitcoin was going for 20000 in Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin that I earned and I didn't convert to usable, spendable cash, that was at five fifteen. dollars Now it was worth 20000 a Bitcoin. So while I'm saying just under 50000 that could be a lot more when we look at the value as, uh, uh, as Flare increases in value. Okay, now let's talk about the structure. Let's talk about the structure, all right? So um, let's say that um, everybody now is, um, Sue here represents everybody here, okay? So Sue, she comes on these live Zooms and Sue is believing for Roger and, uh, you know, there's something that's very interesting. You know, many of us uh, know a little bit about the story of Job uh, in the Old Testament, you know, he lost everything, lost his children, lost his cattle, lost his wealth, uh, was losing his health, lost the support of his wife. And scripture says that Job's captivity was turned when he prayed for his friends. I believe some folks are going to be blessed because you went through that uh, uh, exercise Sending love to Roger, sending health to Roger. I was feeling something over here. Maybe something was happening in my own body. I'll receive that. Okay. So now here you go. You refer a few folks. Okay. You refer a few folks. And here I'm going to show referring uh, six folks here. You can refer as many as you like. That's where the unlimited width comes into play. Okay. Now I want us to get an understanding of how this all works. So I'm going to put the donation amounts up here, and I'm going to assume that Sue here donated all of this, whether she did it uh, initially 
or over time or what have you. So let's say that she's donated all of this up to this point. That means she's qualified to receive all of these donations. Well, what if she's donated all of this? All right. But she has someone that donates over here. Okay. Well, she's not qualified to receive it yet, but it doesn't go to the company and it doesn't go to someone else. It is going to sit in a holding tank. So just as soon as she donates up, so as soon as she sows up, she then gets to reap. All right. So that's something that John just shared with us on last week that he and the programmers were able uh, to program. Okay. That's a big deal. I don't know if you know it, but that's a huge deal. Okay. So now, Sue prefers Jorge. Now, because Jorge is the first person that she um, referred, when Jorge makes his donation, Jorge's donation goes to Sue. And so let's say that Jorge does the same thing. He does the 10 and the 50 and the 100 and the 250 and the 500 and the 1,000 to start in this example, okay? Well, Sue gets 8, 40, 80, 200, 400, 800. You do the math, that's 1528. So Sue has just about uh, recovered her initial seed, okay? Now, second person that Sue refers is a seed. That's Sasha. Now, I made Sasha a little smaller here just so you can see it, okay? What's, what Sasha is going to do is when Sasha donates, Sasha is donating up. So Sue's not going to get that donation. The person that referred Sue is going to get that donation. See, the person that referred Sue sold a seed in her life sharing BDM with Sue. And so this is a way that um, uh, the person that referred Sue reaps from Sue's efforts, okay? Now, remember, we reap what we sow. We got to sow to reap, but we reap more than what we sow. That's the principle. That's the universal law. That was here before we ever got here. Third person is going to donate to Sue. So let's say that's Becky. So now all of a sudden we've got Jorge that's donated to Sue. We've got Becky that's donated to Sue. And let's say that Becky did the same thing over here. Okay. So Sue got 1528 paid to her and Flair, converted whatever she needed to into usable spendable cash, kept the other and Flair in her own crypto bank. Okay. And then Becky, same thing, 1528 in Flair. So now you can see that Sue is well into profits. And Sue is likely starting to eye when she can make this donation over here. Okay. Because she now has a surplus. All right. Fourth person is another seed. All right. Let's say that's Paul. Paul, like Sasha, is going to donate up. Now, the fifth and the sixth person and the seventh and the eighth, anybody from the fifth and beyond, they're going to all donate to Sue. Okay? So if she referred to 17th, that 17th person donates to Sue. If she referred 192nd, that 192nd person donates to Sue. Okay? So first, donates to Sue. Second, donates to up. Third, donates to Sue. Fourth, donates up. Fifth, sixth, seventh, 179th. They all donate to Sue. Now, now, let's see where the uh, we reap what we sow, and then we reap more than what we sow starts to come into play. So, hey, he starts getting on these uh, live Zooms, or he's watching the recordings, or he's doing both. We also will send out um, usually three or four times a week, a transformational nugget covering the four pillars, maybe from a different angle, but the four pillars nonetheless, okay? Uh, all designed to help, you know, uh, John said it, um, uh, the scripture says that faith 
cometh by hearing the word. Now, I wish the author had said this. He didn't say it, but I wish the author had said, faith cometh by hearing over and over and the word over and over and over and over and over again. The more we hear it, the more our faith begins to grow. And so that's what those transformational nuggets are usually less than 15 minutes coming out three to four times a week uh, to help uh, uh, keep uh, our faith fire burning. Okay. All right. So first person that Jorge brings aboard is going to donate to Jorge. But Melinda here is Jorge's second. Who's Melinda donating to? Sue. Third person that Jorge brings aboard is going to donate to Jorge. Fourth person, Raul, I say, is going to donate to who? Sue. We reap more than what we sow. But it doesn't stop there. Because Melinda can have a second and fourth. And who would Melinda's second and fourth donate to? Sue. Raul can have a second and fourth. And who was his, his second and fourth donate to? Sue. And this person's second and fourth? 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 They all donate to who? Sue. And this person's second and fourth, 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 to an unlimited death. Would all donate to who? Sue. Sue sowed a seed, Sasha. Sue sowed a seed, Paul, her second and fourth. But now she receives the second and fourth from everyone that was connected to her. Jorge's connected to her, second and fourth. Melinda is connected to her, her second and fourth. Raul is connected to her, her second and fourth. Let's continue. Now Becky, her first souls to Becky, her second souls to Sue, her third souls to Becky, her fourth souls to Sue, and this young lady's second and fourth, and this young lady's second and fourth, and this young lady's, and this person's second and fourth, second and fourth, second and fourth, second and fourth. Second and fourth, second and fourth, second and fourth, second and fourth. And remember, this is still happening over here. I just got rid of it because I was getting rid of those marks there. And what about her fifth, Sue's fifth and sixth and 17th and 192nd? They're, every one of their second and fourth, so to, uh, so to Sue. And second and fourth, and second and fourth, and second and fourth, and second and fourth, and, second and, fourth. and Elizabeth's. Second and fourth, and 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 second and fourth. Dad, can I say kick butt in this Zoom? Can I say that? If my mom were here, she's left us and she's gone, gone up to be with the Lord, she would say, son, don't say kick butt. So <laughs> I'm on a faith-based Zoom. So kick Backside? <laughs> All right. But listen, I want you to see how powerful this is. I want you to see how powerful this is. For a moment, let's not assume these folks are here yet. Okay? Let's not assume these folks are here yet. Let's just assume that Sue referred... His name is not... Jorge. Yeah. Sue referred Jorge, okay? That's all she's referred so far. So nobody's over here yet. She had not referred anyone else, all right? Well, Jorge still gets his sec his uh, his four. Sue is still going to have Jorge. Give me a moment. Is going to be donating uh, to Sue and Jorge's second, Melinda, here. And... Um, Raul's is going to donate to Sue. And then her second and fourth and second and fourth and second and fourth and second and fourth and second and fourth. You know, I had a, a very dear buddy of mine. Um, I've been in this industry for 30 years and I met this gentleman about uh, 20 plus years ago and he got on me 
he reached out to me. He said, man, why didn't you tell me that um, you were working with a new company? Well, that's because I'm doing a whole lot of work behind the scenes, cutting you're, out. Of you're, you're breaking up. We, we missed we missed what you said. Okay. Where are we now? Can you hear me? Well, you talked about your buddy. Okay. All right. So I had this buddy of mine I've known for 20 years or so. Okay. Um, and I've done very well in this industry, but he's done weller, <laughs> but quite a bit weller than I have. Okay. And he said, man, why didn't you, um, why didn't you tell me what you were doing? I'm sorry. I just hadn't gotten around to it. I'm doing a lot of content and, and what have you. And he said, well, yeah, I heard ab uh, about uh, this new company, um, Billion Dollar Mine. And I was like, really? I said, who did you hear about it from? And he told me who he heard about it from. And I didn't know who the person was. But what's so cool is that should he come aboard um, and he comes aboard with maybe somebody who's not a big you know, marketer, this is what could happen. That guy could bring on my buddy. My buddy could go to town. And his second and fourth, and their second and fourth, second and fourth, second and fourth, second and fourth. And in this case, Sue only referred so far one person. Now, I will tell you, John's going to tell you, if you got an issue with referring and you say, I can't refer anyone, I don't have any friends or family left, John, what are you going to tell the beautiful people? What are you going to say to them? <laughs> You're not using faith. <laughs> and so what will happen as we use faith John, as it relates to building out this model so that we can do what the scripture says, a good man, a good woman leaves an inheritance for the children's children. What will happen, even if I don't know, have the skill set, but I am in gratitude, I've got my vision, I'm surrounding myself with the, the feelings of what it will be like when that vision is accomplished, and I'm affirming it. What's going to happen, John? Well, it should go something like this. Thank you, Lord, that I have no friends left. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to exercise faith. Yes. And then you write the vision and make it plain. What do you want out of this? Do you want one? Do you want two? Do you want five? Do you want a dozen? Do you want a hundred? Uh, so... And, and there are many a aspects to that vision. I mean, there's there's a lot of blank blank spaces you can fill in there. You know, how much money do you want to earn? How much flair do you want to accumulate? Uh, what do you want to be worth in a certain amount of time? And then you begin to surround yourself with the feeling of those things happening. And then you affirm that it's so. Okay, so let it be done. Mm. All right, so... What you have to understand is you don't need to know how. Knowing how is not part of the equation. Faith already knows how. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Wow. You don't need to know how. All you have to do is exercise your faith. And then, yes, you have to listen. If the spirit prompts you to talk to somebody, you talk to them. You pick up the phone or you go visit or whatever, you know, whatever the spirit tells you to do. Or maybe you think about calling somebody that you haven't talked to for a long time, or maybe they think about calling you. I have that happen. I have people call me that I haven't talked to for 20 years. And why do they call me? Because they need to hear what I have to share. John, I got to share this with you. That was that was powerful. You don't need to know how. Faith already knows how. I got to put that on my whiteboard. <laughs> Want to forget that one, John? There's a there's a relationship that's really important to me that had been fractured. And one of the things I did with the faith meditation that you shared with us on last week, um. I, in my faith meditation, I surrounded myself with the feeling of what it would be like and what it would feel like with there being a restoration of that relationship. Guess what happened, John? The person texted me, said, I'd like to spend some time with you. 
And over the weekend, we spent several hours together. And it was as if there had been no strain in the relationship at all. Wow. Hadn't happened before I started exercising these four pillars and listening to the meditation, but it happened. It happened this weekend. Wow. That's the person I love, John. I would go in the grave for them, John. I'd close my eyes for them, John, if I had to. You're and did breaking my meditation. Up. You're, you're breaking up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, am I back? Am I back, John? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we're just about finished here. Let me see. Let me make sure. I think we are. All right. So, so ladies and gentlemen, that is the, that is the model um, John, can you uh, maybe give us, and we'll get into uh, optional Q&A in here in just a moment. John, can you give us, um, I know you started off with some updates. We might have had some folks that came on a little bit late. Um, do you have any updates on where we stand with the model, where we stand with a potential launch? Uh, I know we may not be ready to give a, an exact date, but do you, you want to share that real quickly? And then we'll get into Q&A. Well, I had a very long day yesterday with the programmers, um, over a dozen Zoom calls. I, I lost count, but uh, we're finalizing the compensation plan, and also they've started integrating the wallet. I'm expecting that could take at least uh, a week to get the wallet integrated. So um, let's just shoot maybe for for lucky uh couple weeks so oh, that sounds like um got a lot of content to get done to make sure folks can get all their wallets set up so we'll be going to work on on, on all of that ladies and gentlemen okay 